This video is sponsored by Squarespace, but first I need to speed up your render time by like a thousand. In this video, I'm going to show you how to render much faster. Important things is I'm using default settings, default resolution, default CPU, default samples. So definitely we have some like optimization to do. Let's say I go 30 frames down, last frame, I move this kind of forwards a bit, keyframe. Now we have an animation, which means we need to render 30 frames. So the first thing you're going to notice is this is incredibly slow. If you look at the samples, which is basically saying how much compute are we doing until it's done, it's going one at a time and it's so noisy and it's going to take forever to resolve. Roughly, this is how long a frame takes, multiply it by 30, this is how long your render will take. That is unusable. First biggest optimization, obviously it's changed to your GPU if you have one. So if you have a CUDA GPU, like an old one, you say, I'm using my CUDA GPU. I have RTX, so I'm going to enable optics and make sure that this is enabled. Already you can see the samples are hopping by like a factor of 10 or 20. It's going substantially faster. What is the difference between these? Well, let's assume that this has a single core. The GPU, however, has thousands of cores. Let's say our operation is adding one. Let's say we're doing this one million times. Assuming the CPU has one core, it's going to kind of batch this one at a time. So one plus one is two. You take that, you add another one, three, you do this a million times. The GPU, however, because it has thousands of cores, can kind of batch these together. I take one plus one, this is two. I take one plus one, this is two. Each core gets assigned kind of part of the problem, which means in a single iteration, you've gone from a million to only 500,000 operations to go. And again, it didn't do 500,000, it did one. It turns out a lot of ray tracing and stuff like this can be paralyzed or at least sped up. If we set this to a single sample, you get an image like this, you set it to 10, set it to 100, even better. I think for 500, you can get the same looking thing. And on top of this, by default settings, we're gonna get a passive denoising, which you're gonna see. This is what it initially looks like, and then denoised, it smooths out a substantial amount of that noise. By the way, you're gonna see every single frame, it needs to compute all this, like what are the objects, etc. Enable persistent data. To get this to work, you do need to start by rendering a single frame. I can now hit render again. This time, the difference is you're going to see these calculations aren't going to go for as long. We have denoising enabled by default. I do want this. However, if you have a GPU, enable use GPU. Or even better, if you have an NVIDIA card, enable optics. Next, under simplify, this is going to let us kind of remove all these extra subdivisions we don't care about. At no point do we need six subdivisions. At most, we need three. What if we set it to one? Still can't really tell too much of a difference. I'm going to set the texture limit. In other words, every texture, how big can it be? At no point should it be bigger than 2048. For culling, just enable both of these. If our camera is right here, this has like a field of view of whatever. And then anything inside of this zone is what we see. However, things like over here and like over here are kind of wasted compute. Culling will get rid of that. Distance calling will get rid of things very far in the distance. And then under light paths, you're going to see fast global illumination approximation. Fast means faster. So I'm going to enable it. And under advanced, I recommend doing this at timer. This is just going to use a different noise pattern on every frame. If you want, you can enable scrambling distance. Sometimes you get some like artifacts. I'm just going to enable it for now. We'll see if that's an issue. The way ray tracing basically works is you have a light source. Basically, this light ray is going to go towards some geometry, at which point, let's say it hits the stair, it's going to bounce. And then it is going to bounce. And then it is going to bounce. Here you can see every single setting. This is kind of the control for everything. So if I set this to zero, ugh, you're going to see that this uh, glass becomes black. So I'm going to increase by one. It's looking a bit better. Three, bring it up to four. And now you can see the glass is actually transparent. Instead of 12, let's compromise at five. PNG is notorious for taking forever with compression. Even if you have it at 15%, it's quite close. If you have 100, God help you. So I'm going to set the compression to zero. I would recommend using OpenEXR. Not only does it save substantially more data, but it doesn't have this compression problem. So let's actually do OpenEXR, set the precision to half. DWAA is what everybody does. It doesn't seem like we actually need an alpha channel. So let's just get rid of the alpha channel. Wow, some of these things have a lot of geo. More geometry means more in memory, means more compute. Like this is ridiculous. This is with, this is without. I don't think we even it. I'm gonna get rid of it. Let's get rid of subdivision. Fine. Oh, by the way, apparently then there's a silly little model in the corner. Who would have known if you have four faces right next to each other, turning it into a single face won't really make a visual difference. You can take it and run a unsubdivide command, which generally works, but it might be a bit too intense. Instead, let's use a decimate modifier, which will figure this out for us. So let's bring this even further. There you're starting to see some artifacts. So let's go with 45%. Once you're happy with this, I'm going to select more objects that I want to run this with. Shift click the one that has the modifier, control L, and then link, uh, what is it? Link modifiers, and then we can apply them. I gotta pee. Maybe peeing will make the renders faster. Oh yes, this is exactly what I needed. I was feeling the the P uh, <laughs> sub-optimizing, making it longer, it was weighing me down. There are hundreds and thousands of particles and light gets trapped and that can really be an issue. So inside the particle system, you're gonna see most importantly, it has five segments. That means every single hair strand is divided into five kind of like vertices. I think this is under curves. I think we can change it. So we can bring down curve subdivisions, I think is how this works. As you render, make sure you wireframe. This is actually gonna use less memory. Go to file, go to cleanup, unused data blocks, get rid of anything there. Same for recursive if there's anything and you just wanna basically go down this list. Now, this is where I start getting a bit controversial. The resolution, this can be reduced and you might be wondering why would you do that? Now you just have less image. But what this means is if I have a image of a certain resolution, when I set this to 50, it will make it 50% on the X and the Y. In other words, we're rendering a quarter. But the upshot is once you have this image, different photo editors and also video editors like DaVinci Resolve, so even for video, can super scale. They can 2X the resolution. But there's also temporal kind of like savings. So imagine that this is a 30 frame sequence. We're rendering every single frame. However, one frame to the next isn't that different, okay? Especially when the camera's moving slowly. What I'm saying is you can actually skip and we can interpolate that back in. You do this by taking your frames one through 30 and you set the step to two. We're gonna render not in Blender, but actually in the command line. And I think this is basically the command we want. So it's going to render A, an animation, blend file, and we rename this with our uh, file. We got to find the Blender executable, which might be in program files. There it is, Blender Foundation. I'm using 4.1. So I'm going to copy address. I'm going to set path equal to this path, hit enter. So now it should know what Blender is, I believe. And then we are going to go to the desktop. So CD means change directory. This is where my file lives. You're going to type in Blender dash B, the name of your blend file. For me, it's untitled dot blend dash A for animation, hit enter. And now it should start rendering from the uh, command line. And there you go. I think it should recognize it as a sequence. It does. Okay. So in timelines, create new timeline instead of 
the project settings. Let's go here. We're going to pretend that it's 1080p. We're also going to pretend that it's 24 FPS. I'm going to click uh, create, import this in. Again, it's going to go in times two uh, speed here. We go to change clip speed. We're going to make it half speed so that it's back to the 24 FPS. But now it's going to basically skip frames. Retime process, optical flow, motion estimation. I don't know. Let's do speed work. When I go a frame down, even though before it skipped, now every single frame is like added. 2x uh, resolution. So when I enable this, you can see all of a sudden we get this kind of like boost in uh, sharpness. Add to render queue, hit render. And compared to rendering 2x, like that is instant. And there you go. Those are the tricks that I know. Of course, this was a very extreme example. You might want to keep it at a thousand samples, maybe not skip frames, but that is up to you. And speaking of massive speed ups, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. They make making websites super fast. So here's a demo. This is you trying to get analytics any other way without Squarespace. <sighs> a little hard. You want to know where the people are coming from. And this represents trying to design your website by doing all this HTML and moving things and it's going to be difficult. With Squarespace, you can just move around blocks and it just takes care of itself. You can update at any moment. So this is without using Squarespace. Easier to just use Squarespace. And finally, if you are running a business, you need to have people buy digital products or whatever, Squarespace offers easy payment options that anybody can use. We're talking PayPal, Visa, MasterCard, anything. So if you don't have Squarespace, you're gonna be struggling. I can't even close it. You are fighting an uphill battle. Can't do it. So head over to Squarespace and design your website. And when you're ready to take that thing and launch it, you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. There's a link below.